things are hot and humid in Mexico. There are signs of the jungle taking back spaces everywhere in our neighborhood. including the inside of my own boat. I will miss this sultry port, which I seldom leave these days. I have some tasks to finish up before leaving, though. Using up the fruits and vegetables, including these old apples, to bake into a simple but satisfying soft and sticky apple crumble. A bit of flour, oats, lots of sugar on both the apple bits and in the mix. Vanilla and oil. If you have some cinnamon and cardamom lying around, those will obviously fit nicely in there as well. Thanks to our viewers. I get some more sanding in with 40 grit pads and a new heavy duty tool before leaving so that I don't have to come back home to a horror show of moldy, badly painted walls. It just makes sense to get in a good arm workout before I'm going to be doing a lot of walking in Annapolis. It's also nice to have a great mariachi sent off as our neighbors celebrate another birthday or similar event across the canal. Right and early, Robbie got me to the airport three hours ahead of my flight so that I could clear through security and immigration without stressing out more than I already was. Oof. Now I'm finally at the shopping portion of the airport. Everything went super smoothly. I guess it's because the airport hasn't woken up yet. Just waiting for the flight. I remember this from last time I flew, which was a million years ago. Slowly, the restaurant and souvenir shops opened up the last chance to grab little pieces of Mexico before flying away from it. The business lounge, which I am not utilizing. I made my way over to Margaritaville at 9.30 in the morning to buy myself the most expensive Bahama Mama drink I have ever purchased in order to calm down before boarding. I don't know if you know, but I'm not a heavyweight drinker and I got totally smashed about 15 minutes before getting on the flight. I'm really uncomfortable flying, and this bug didn't help my nerves as it positions itself a foot and a half away from my face while the plane descended into Baltimore. Aloha, welcome to Hawaii. <laughs> Just kidding. My trusty friend Sean was on the ground waiting to pick me up in his huge ass SUV for the drive into Annapolis. First stop in the States was to get a vaccine. Although it took a couple of tries because I was looking for the one shot Johnson & Johnson. In any case, I'm thankful to have started the process of not being as much of a vector for transmission of COVID anymore. And now I could start to relax and enjoy the location that I had been dropped down into, to start the adventure of being at my first boat show and meeting new boaty friends. The neighborhood surrounding the Annapolis Boat Show is a quaint and calm place that reminds me a bit of the ivy-covered, red-bricked communities that I grew up near just north of the border in my own nation's capital, 
The main difference being only that this city is adjacent to saltier water, I guess? When the crowds began showing up, I was happy to have gotten my shot. With this large gathering, we were all going to need as much protection as we could get. My housemates had their newly delivered ML50 sloop on display in the boat show. My boat! How crazy is it to see your boat? It's crazy! Getting a line up for it. I know! She's a beauty! The first morning of the show, the care team and the owners struggled to polish and shine her up as the foot traffic already began to descend upon the decks. There was inspection of the rigging and testing out of Frigata's systems. Oh, One sec, I'm just enough. catching my breath. The boat show crowd was intimidating to me, as someone who has been in relative isolation down in Mexico. I tagged along with Brady, Blue, and Sean of Cruisers Academy as we started to get the urge to hop aboard vessels. Uh, that was graceful. <laughs> I can see myself on a strong aluminum lifting keel sailboat someday, but I was struggling with the interior layout here. But I wonder how many know. It's a little cavernous. Do you see this? Come in here. Oh, maybe not under the stairs? Wow, okay. Right? I take it with back. Nap, with nap area included. Who needs TP? There's a whole cabinet. I can hardly see myself in the mirror. That's worth getting. I like the little workshop. Workshop's nice. These former crew of SV Delos were getting recognized every couple of minutes out on the dock. It was really interesting to interact, to hear and see the positive effects that these guys have had on so many fellow cruisers and viewers. Over at the YouTube Sailing Channel's booth, similar, albeit more scheduled interactions were going down, with content creators chatting and selling their wares. The ML50 became the meetup point for several important Bodhi matters, including the launching of Harbor Burn cannons. Throughout the week, we would fire these cannons many times from the winches of Frigata. Okay, where do you want me to sit? Do you want me to sit right here? We're gonna go full charge this time. Yeah. Those ready? Cover yours! Fire! Oh. Oh. With all the enthusiastic crowds around this particular vessel, I was lucky to have been given an exclusive tour by the owner. Okay. <laughs> Holy crap, it's roomy. Welcome to my living room. Yeah, it's just for a little sail. This is what um, wow. Brady and Blue got us in Galapagos. Yeah. These are pillows with the fregata. Fregata. Magnificent. It's the Latin name for frigate bird. Oh, it smells so new in here. <laughs> <laughs> Even though there were like a thousand people in here today. <laughs> it's a freezer, right? And then the ones that oh, are wow. in the kitchen, one of them can turn into a freezer and one can stay as a fridge. That's really open. Completely different, right? 100% different. Okay. This is super open in here. Yes. Well, this is the most important part. Yes, it's, it's like the, this coffee pot, which is huge, is ready in three minutes. And oh, at wow. home, like it takes me with gas, and I've got to Yeah. Dishwasher, freezer, microwave. There is no lack of cruising comforts and bright, roomy openness in this vessel. Microwave, 
dishwasher, and plenty of cold storage. From the obvious essentials to the small extras that make all the difference to full-time ocean travelers. Yes, and it's locked, see? Yeah. You know why? Because of this, for the passage. It's like locking a locking device. So you put it here. It was no wonder that the crowds were flocking to see this boat. Boo, it's not my boat. Nice reaction. There's your commercial. <laughs> yes, I wow. just filmed it. I couldn't help but notice the peculiarity of the seemingly endless crowds of potential ML buyers waiting their turn outside of the boat, even at this late hour in the show, while the YouTubers who made the brand one of the most well known names to millions of viewers worldwide were inside discovering all its improvements, modernizations, and beautifications. It made me wonder. How much influence do YouTube channels really have at this boat show? On the boats, their designs, and in the growing number of folks looking to buy and sail. All the fun toys on this boat. It's still retractable cars. Is it? The proud new owners of Fregata, Aga, and Justin were kind enough to tell me their thoughts on acquiring the newly built vessel. What inspired you to get an ML specifically? Well, it was really Justin doing the research, taking all the boxes of things that were important to him. The hardest thing when you're buying a boat, I think, is to set aside the emotional response you have to things mm. and to write down a list of the things, like, what are you actually looking to do? That's hard for me, I'm a designer, so I have an emotional response to things, right? Um, but really looking, when we looked at what we wanted to do, objectively, nothing came close. So this, this checked all the boxes. You you wanted to cruise, you you saw yourself Three in a couple rooms, of years. Three rooms, we wanted brightness below, and we didn't want to feel like we were going to a cave. Uh, it wanted a boat that was a uh, trusted, safe, blue water cruiser. I really wanted a, uh, a hard top, because I think you, you know, being protected both from the sun and, and the cold, all the elements, uh, is really important. And then I wanted something that had, whose outdoor living space wasn't tiny, right? Again, if, mm -hmm. if you have a really small cockpit, you end up sort of feeling like you're going into, into the inside when you really want to go see the world and be outside. I asked them about how it felt to have the throngs of boat showers visit the boat and to display their boat in the show. Yeah, you get to compare it to the boats yeah. right next to you. Yeah, yeah, right, like literally compare like next to us. Being here, it's a privilege and uh, we, of course, think we've made a good choice, but having, you know, we've heard through the grapevine and <laughs> everyone thinks, you know, yeah. this was the bell of the ball. This hundreds, the hundreds or thousands of people telling you. <laughs> While in Annapolis, it was also an opportune time for our viewer Curtis to send over boat parts from his father Terry Cease's engine. Is that too scary? Was that too aggressive? Yeah. <laughs> some, some new belts, some old belts, harness. Uh, I'm not going to be able to name any of these. Uh, uh, temperature? That's a thermostat. Thermostat? Someone who has all of the time in the world. Like, turn it around. Not the other way. Yeah, like this. See, yeah, it looks like a piece of art. <laughs> oh my goodness. Exchanger. I kind of knew it was coming. Kind of. Yeah. There's a ton of impellers in here. Awesome. Thank you, Curtis and Terry. The next step will be to trek home with these engine parts to Mexico.